Ike Ekwerimado is not a happy man tonight. Yes, I did. So, uh, the former Deputy Senate President and his wife are right now in custody in the United Kingdom. Why? Well, the couple are charged with conspiring to transport a child into the UK in order to harvest organs. Mr. Ekwerimado served three terms as Nigeria's Deputy President of the Senate from 2007 to 2019. The lawyer and politician has been a senator since 2003 and belongs to the opposition People's Democratic Party. The investigation began when detectives were alerted to potential modern-day slavery offenses. Well, let's cross live now to London, where arrives international correspondent Adefemi Akinsoya, uh, who was at the Oxbridge Magistrate Court earlier, joins us now. Uh, Femi, thank you for joining us. You were at the court hearing uh, earlier today. What was said during the hearing? What do we know? Thank you, Adesua. What we know is that Ike Ikeremadu, Senator Ike Ikeremadu, alongside his wife Beatrice, both appeared in court today. They spoke very briefly just to identify themselves and confirm their addresses and sat in on this hearing where the initial charges, uh, one for each of them, were read out. And as you've already said in the introduction there, they have been accused, they were charged today, uh, accused of uh, facilitating bringing a person into the United Kingdom to exploit them. And what we do know is that the report is that allegedly the victim at the crux of this matter is supposed to be, or allegedly, uh, a 15-year-old boy. Because of the person's age, uh, his identity has remained confidential. But we do know that he remains in the custody, the protective custody of authorities. He remains in care while this case continues. Meanwhile, back in court, uh, both the Ekwerimadu's uh, Senator Ike and Beatrice, through their legal counsel, each of them separately represented sought to be relieved and released on bail uh, pending the continuation of this case. The magistrates uh, denied their request for bail, uh, citing the fact that they felt because they felt that the two would be slight risks and have decided that they remain in custody until the next court hearing, which is expected to be the 7th of July. So it, it, in, in its entirety, uh, Onyi and Adesua, it wasn't a, a very long day in court. Uh, what we were able to witness was, of course, the two defendants make their appearance and hear a very brief background to the case. Femi, um, just help us understand this. Um, modern day slavery is actually the accusation um, on the table here. How did the authorities get wind of this particular news? Was, this, was it this young man who went to report this case or was this a tip off? Did you get any information on how they learned about um, the case? point ladies it's still very early and still very sensitive information because this case centers on an alleged child so we have to be very careful with the information that we get in and how we bring it back out but it did it does seem as though uh, according to uh, what was said in court today that it is believed that the alleged victim was the one who sounded the alarm and alerted the authorities to what has brought about these charges. Now, if we look at these charges, the conspiracy on one end and the facilitation on the other to bring a person into the United Kingdom to exploit them, that exploitation pertains to the harvesting of organs as it pertains to what we've been hearing. And that, of course, is quite concerning. And then when you look at the extra layer of accusations at this point, alleged alleged modern day enslavement of a person who is believed to be an underage person, believed to be a child, is very concerning. And that is why the UK legal system, still at the magistrate level now, has sought to first and foremost seek to protect the alleged child in this case, which is exactly why his identity has not been publicly made. But what we do know is that this entire process is believed to have been started by the alleged victim in this matter, alerting the authorities to what they have claimed to have happened to them. It's very difficult because we're trying to be as yeah. 
that's careful with our wording because it is quite a sensitive situation. It's still very early on in the legal process. But to answer your question, this entire situation started allegedly after this alleged victim made themselves known to the police. Indeed, and we do appreciate uh, what you're doing, uh, Femi. Indeed, like you said, it's an active police investigation, and so a lot cannot be revealed just now. But can I ask you what the mood was like uh, during the hearing in court? What did you see and feel from the Aquarium Meadows? Firstly, uh, mostly all of the people who had filled the gallery were international journalists, journalists who were, who were based in the United Kingdom. It was in fact just us, uh, myself there, who was the only Nigerian representative of a Nigerian network in the courtroom there. And it was a small gallery, a small courtroom, but uh, it was quite tense. The temperature was quite warm inside and that added to the tension within the room. When the defendants entered the courtroom, as I said, they were very quiet they only spoke to identify themselves and their address and they never spoke again for the for the duration of the hearing they were represented and defended by each of their defense counsels and their defense counsels first and foremost priority was to try and release their clients uh, on bail which was clearly unsuccessful and they are going to remain in uh, police custody uh, be, we, it's unclear where exactly they're going to be remaining until July 7th but it's very difficult to say definitively what the mood was like what they said because they weren't able to say much we do know that one of the Equeramadu children was sat in the gallery and refused to give uh, declined to give any public comment when he left court today and that could be that's obviously his own prerogative we can't uh, coerce or force him to talk but he politely declined and did not speak to any of the press before walking out of court today uh, alongside his you know, one of the lawyers for his parents and made his way out. So it's 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 quite a, a, a very early on in this investigation, but it's very hard to gauge the feeling um, of the defendants. But we do know that they have been obviously defended by legal counsel who have dismissed and definitely put a separation between their client and these charges. Again, just to remind you, the charges are the conspiracy and the facilitation of bringing a person into the United Kingdom to exploit them. And that exploitation, so we've heard, has been connected to organ harvesting. Well, I guess um, I definitely at this point, you're just going to have to wait till the next hearing, um, you know, to, to find out more about this particular investigation. It's a whole lot going on right now, but very little that can be said on this particular matter. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, as I said, there's still, it, it sounds as though there's quite a lot more that needs to be said. There have been questions and accusations about the age and the, 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 the the genuine nature of the age of the alleged victim in this case and how he came to be here in the United Kingdom, what the circumstances that brought him here was, what the plans for his future are going to be in light of the accusations that have been made against Ike and Beatrice Ikeremadu. There's a lot of questions that need to be answered and we'll be following this case for as long as it continues. Well, thank you very much, Adifi Makinsonia, there um, reporting live um, from London.